Episodes of Pellet Swap are suggested by viewers like you. If there's a character you'd like me to analyze, let me know in the comment section down below. Good morrow everyone, Silvershire here, and welcome back to Pellet Swap, where I rank the costumes and character designs of your favorite fighting games. And by your favorite fighting games, I mean my favorite fighting games, and by my favorite fighting games, I mean Tekken. Today, we're covering two characters. For the first half of the video, we'll be discussing the world's most American-Australian, Craig Marduk. And after that, we'll be taking a look at King's Phase 1 MCU villain, Armor King. But before we begin our analysis, here's a quick refresher course on who Marduk is and what we should be looking for in his character design. Marduk was the undefeated champ of Vale Tudo, a brutal anything-goes combat sport. Following a scandal that got him kicked out of the Pro League, he decided to let his anger out in a healthy and responsible way. Just kidding, he got into a bar fight, killed a guy, and went to jail. But the guy he killed just so happened to be the professional wrestler Armor King, and his buddy King wasn't too happy about that. So he bribed some judiciaries into releasing Marduk and invited him to the fourth King of Iron Fist tournament, where he could exact his vengeance. Marduk's Tekken 4 1P is one of the series' most basic designs. He's just wearing shorts and padded gloves, which is the standard gear for an MMA fighter. He does have a necklace and some brightly colored tattoos that make him a tad more interesting. But when the competition includes a jaguar man, an assassin in a pink cat suit, a robot, a grizzly bear, whatever Yoshimitsu is, and a bunch of guys with enough hair gel to withstand a hurricane, this dude is just kind of forgettable. 5 out of 10. His 2P is a lot better, because it actually conveys some information about who Marduk is. The snakeskin pants and gold bling indicate that he's a big shot who likes to show off his wealth, and his name being plastered in huge letters on his vest is a sign of his egotistical personality. His vest also features a gecko drawn in the style of Aboriginal art, cluing us in that he comes from the land down under. His entire palette is desaturated, but this is one of the rare instances where that works well, because it grounds the design and keeps it from looking ostentatious. This costume doesn't wow me, but it nails what it's going for. Plus, it's always fun when an alt changes up a character's hair. 7 out of 10. The second 5 1P doesn't change much. His tattoos are now black, which is less unique but more fitting for a tough guy like Marduk, and his shorts now have a dark green pattern, which adds a bit of variety. I'd prefer to see some bigger changes, but this is an improvement. 6 out of 10. His 2P is similarly similar. Yeah, that's a good sentence. It's not quite as flashy, instead focusing on intimidation. He's rocking black leather gloves, jewelry adorned with sharp teeth or claws, and a pair of sunglasses, which I like for totally unbiased reasons. The aboriginal art on his vest is also much more prominent. Unfortunately, he no longer has a different hairstyle and he no longer has his name written on his back. This outfit does some things better than his previous 2P, but I think it's a downgrade overall. 6 out of 10. All of Dark Resurrection's costumes are palette swaps of the Tekken 5 costumes. Marduk's 1P is now orange and black instead of green, which isn't as eye-catching and sort of clashes with the purple. 5 out of 10. His 2P now has a black vest and off-white pants, which I am totally neutral about, but it also has dark teal gloves and shoes, which is just strange. Also a 5 out of 10. Tekken 6, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, and Tekken Tag Tournament 2 all reuse one or both of his Tekken 5 designs, so I'll be skipping straight to the new costumes. Like King, his Tekken 6 3P is a collaboration with the real-world clothing brand Tap Out, but unlike King, they literally just slapped a t-shirt on his regular 1P doesn't match the rest of his outfit and feels super lazy, which is a shame because I actually think it's a pretty cool shirt. 4 out of 10. His Street Fighter Cross Tekken 2P is inspired by native Australian fashion. This is something that I know basically nothing about, so I can't speak to its accuracy or its cultural significance other than, yeah, that looks about right. But I can talk about the aesthetics, which are pretty good. It has a unique silhouette and a vibrant yet not garish color palette. They smartly removed his tattoos so that they wouldn't interfere with his body paint but it might have been cooler to see the shapes of his tattoos worked into the pattern somehow. I'm in two minds about his shorts and gloves. They don't really match the rest of the design, but they help him maintain some Mordokosity. Despite its shortcomings, I gotta hand it to this costume for trying something creative. 7 out of 10. Street Fighter Cross Tekken also gives everyone swap costumes based on characters from the other series. Mordok's is based on Hugo, which puts it at a disadvantage because I don't really like Hugo's design, but I do like how it was altered to better fit Mordok. He's bare-chested, and there are some tattered edges above his waist that imply he was wearing a shirt but ripped it off, which is fun visual storytelling. The long hair and oversized chains lend him a larger-than-life energy that feels more at home alongside the likes of King and Armor King. 6 out of 10. His Tekken 7 1P takes the MMA-inspired look he's known for and gives it a rough-and-tumble urban twist, which is also the name of my signature dance move. The t-shirt, sneakers, and ripped hoodie are perfect for someone who takes fights outside of the ring, and they provide visual intrigue in the form of decals and patterns. 
including the gecko motif, which shows up in numerous places. He also now has a long beard and full sleeve tattoos, which make him more distinct and recognizable regardless of his outfit. His palette is mostly the same as usual, but with the addition of some bright cyan, which I really like. It contrasts well against the green and purple, but since it's a cool color, it still fits right in. My only major complaint is that he traded out his iconic necklace for a more generic silver chain. 8 out of 10. This costume's alternate color is red, black, and blue. Red is my favorite color, as well as one that fits Marduk's aggression, and I like the overall darker palette. 9 out of 10. Armor King was a mysterious professional wrestler whose background and motivation are still unknown. He was once a rival of King, who accidentally damaged his eye in their first bout, but his animosity later turned to respect and eventually to friendship. When King was killed by an Aztec god from outer space, long story there, Armor King became the mentor to his successor, King II. Prior to the fourth King of Iron Fist tournament, Armor King tragically died in a bar fight with Craig Marduk, but somehow, he returned to fight in the fifth and sixth tournaments. In a climactic showdown at the graveyard, Armor King revealed that he was Armor King II, the brother of the original Armor King, who had come to exact his vengeance. Well, there's a lot of that this episode. As the name implies, Armor King basically looks like an armored version of King, but even as early as the first game, there's more to him than that. His mask and tail are gray instead of yellow, and his damaged eye is red and scarred. This isn't the subtlest way to design an edgy antagonist for King, but there's only so much room for subtlety when you're a luchador with a cat head. His armor utilizes triangular shape language that makes him seem even more threatening than Vanilla King, and though it's entirely monochromatic, there's strong value contrast thanks to his bright silver gauntlets and greaves. Unfortunately, his pants are the same color as his armor, which muddles the design. That said, I appreciate that Namco's artists went the extra mile to make Armor King stand out, especially since the wrestler that inspired him, Black Tiger, is a straight-up palette swap of his rival Tiger Mask. 6 out of 10. Speaking of straight-up palette swaps, his 2P is just his 1P, but in blue. I don't think that this is any better or worse than the black version, it's a totally passable alternative. 6 out of 10. His Tag Tournament 1P slims the armor down in places to give him a more defined silhouette. His gauntlets and greaves are no longer a different color, but his pants are noticeably darker and he has some exposed skin, so his palette is actually more varied than before. He could do with some more armor on his legs to balance out the design, though. 7 out of 10. His 2P is once again just his 1P, but in blue. His pants aren't as dark, so the palette is a little one note. 6 out of 10. His 3P is a shirtless version of his 1P. I guess Unarmored Armor King is a neat option to have, but it's super plain. 4 out of 10. His second 5 1P has a more prominent belt and a breastplate that mimics the musculature of his torso, both of which evoke the image of a classic strongman or wrestler. He also has a longer tacit to protect his thighs. These are small but welcome improvements. 8 out of 10. Shockingly, his 2P isn't just his 1P, but in blue. It's similar in concept to his Tag Tournament 3P, but unlike that one, it's a bespoke new outfit. The splashes of red and the death metal band logo on his pants spice up the simple silhouette, and the spikes on his boots help to maintain that edgy Armor King flair. I'm still never going to choose this over Armored Armor King, but it's a definite step up from Tag Tournament. 6 out of 10. His second 6 3P is a collaboration with the real world clothing brand Tap Out. Like Marduk, it's literally just one of his existing costumes with a t shirt slapped on, but it works way better here. His pants and shoes are a great fit for Tap Out's dark aesthetic, and the addition of a shirt makes his upper half more interesting. I'd still prefer a totally unique outfit, but I like how this came together. 7 out of 10. Armor King has apparently been getting some fashion tips from Devil Jin. His second 7-1P goes all in on making him look like a deadly warrior. His armor is spikier than ever, there are chains wrapped around his chest and arms, and he's wearing a tattered waist cloth emblazoned with the kanji for evil. Ordinarily, I would criticize that last point for being way too on the nose, except Armor King isn't actually evil, this is just him playing into his persona of a wrestling heel. Might also be a callback to King's t-shirt from Tag Tournament. As a medieval fantasy nerd, I love that this costume incorporates some chainmail under his armor, and the fur around his neck is fitting considering his regal moniker. On top of all that, it's silver and red, which is objectively the best color combination, and if you disagree, you're wrong. 10 out of 10. This costume's alternate color is gold and purple, two colors historically associated with royalty. It looks good, but doesn't quite live up to the default palette if you ask me. Even setting my bias aside, the desaturated purple gets drowned out by shiny gold. 9 out of 10. And with that, we have ranked every single Marduk and Armor King costume. Marduk's whole aesthetic isn't one that really appeals to me, but his outfits usually do a good job of communicating what he's all about. Armor King is more up my alley, and it was neat to see the subtle evolution of his 1P over the years. It is a shame that he's had so few alternate costumes, though. Well, that's just my opinion, so what do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below if you agree or disagree with any of my rankings. Also, let me know which character you'd like to see next. 
For episode 15, we'll be discussing Raphael from Soul Calibur, as requested by Barnabas. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, I bid thee farewell.